Good morning, BBYO. It's hard to believe I'm standing here today, given how many times I almost got kicked out of Cedar Lake Sleepaway Camp growing up. Originally, I'm from the Upper West Side of Manhattan, born and raised. Here's some cheering out there. And I graduated from the University of Maryland in 2016. Oh yeah. Four days after graduating, I went to Marine Corps boot camp. Now, I knew that I wanted to do this my junior year of college. I didn't tell my parents until my senior year of college. They weren't very happy, to say the least. But I explained to them that I wasn't ready for an office job. And this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to serve my country for the next six years or however long I would choose to do that. Another key contributing factor was 9-11. Being that I'm from New York City, that's a day that I hold very dear to my heart. I remember everything about that day, even though I was only seven years old at the time. After I graduated from boot camp, I went to School of Infantry in North Carolina. I was selected to be a machine gunner, and I was assigned my first duty station at 2nd Battalion, 7th Marine Regiment in 29 Palms, California. A little over a year later, I found myself as a turret gunner going into Fallujah to recover a downed aircraft. It was probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. A little over a year and a half later, I was on my second deployment going to Afghanistan for my first time. About six months through that deployment, the President of the United States told us to start breaking down the first base of the withdrawal. I was in Boast. It was a little bit outside of Lashkargah City in Afghanistan. A month later, we were redeployed to Iraq. And about three months later, I was moving across country to my second duty station at 1st Battalion, 8th Marines. About four months later, I was deploying for my third time, but this time I was going on an, the Marine Expeditionary Unit, which is what we call a MEW. This was the 24th MEW. During that deployment, we went to the United Kingdom, Spain, Greece, Kuwait, and in August of 2021, we found ourselves in Kabul, Afghanistan. My company, Alpha Company, and 1st Battalion, 8th Marines was the first group of Marines there for the evacuation. Roughly 12 hours after landing, we were assigned to start setting security, and it more or less didn't stop for the next 17 days that I was there. Over the first four days, we maybe slept 30 minutes, going from one job to the next, doing whatever was asked of us. During that 17 days, we helped evacuate over 120,000 different people. Now, on August 21st of 2021, I was working at the north gate of the Kabul International Airport, and I was assisting with the detailed search area. I was going on my rest cycle, which was about an hour off, and I saw two female Marines holding two babies. I walked over and I asked, whose babies are these? One of the Marines, who was later killed on the Abbey Gate bombing on August 26th, along with 12 other American servicemen and women, was Sergeant Nicole G. They responded. They didn't know whose baby these were. They were just holding on to them. One of the female Marines asked me if I wanted to hold on to the baby for the next half hour because she had to go do something else. I agreed. I sat down with the baby for the next half hour. And I just held the baby. I joked with the baby. We laughed and we smiled. Mind you, at this point, I had already named the baby Northgate and had determined that it was eight days old. None of this was factual information. I was just enjoying myself and trying to make the baby smile. During that time, a photograph was taken of me, and within days, it was posted all over social media and the news. I didn't expect that at all. Shortly after, I handed the baby off to a Marine officer, and he took the baby to a hospital on the base where he was reunited with his father, thankfully. Now, before I leave you guys, I want you to remember something. I encourage you all not to lose who you are when things get difficult. It doesn't matter how tired or beaten down you may be, you never know how much that glimpse of hope will mean to somebody. Wherever life takes you, 
If you have the opportunity to do a mitzvah for someone, no matter how big or small, take the time to do it. Thank you.